Hey everyone and welcome to the second session of Lightroom Basics. Uh, we are still working on bringing out the details. As you saw in our last video, we covered temperature and the tone block here. If you haven't already seen that video, be sure to check it out to get up to speed on where we're at today. So today we're going to be talking about this presence cube. We're going to be going over clarity and then we're going to move down to tone curves and show you how to properly balance your lights and darks, your highlights and shadows using this tone curve. Very powerful tool that's going to help you balance and create an awesome contrast for your picture. So once we have adjusted the tones and the temperature, we're going to move down to presence. And we're going to work, be working with clarity today. We won't be going over vibrance or saturation. We're going to save that for the next episode. Um, but today we're going to be working with clarity. And what the Clarity tool does is adjusts the sharpness and the details throughout your image. As you see, if you pull the slider left on Clarity, it makes your image really soft. If you pull it all the way right, it makes the details really crisp and pronounced. This tool is very easy to overdo as a beginner. It's a very powerful tool and only minor adjustments need to be made when processing your image. So uh, just like we discussed last week, we're just going to be finding a balance since this still has to do with details. We're going to be moving the slider left, right, and then finding a balance in between. You don't want it to be the details to be over pronounced. You just want them to be pronounced. You want to make sure that all of the details are crisp in your image. Doing it too much is going to create a really dramatic image, um, but we don't want it to be overly dramatic unless that's the style you're going for. So uh, just creating a nice balance in the details there. Around plus seven is where I usually end up. Okay, so once we've um, established that, that actually finalizes the detail portion of the workshop. And we're going to move down to tone curve. And again, this adjusts the highlights and the shadows, the whites and the blacks. The further down the line you adjust, the darker the areas that you're going to be adjusting. The higher up on the line, the brighter areas you're going to be adjusting and then everything in between. So when adjusting the tone curves I usually start at the corner of this block here grab onto it and then just slide it around down and right and then up to create a nice balance of contrast. Next I go to the very top bring it down a little bit and this is affecting the the whitest whites in the image and we just want to make sure that it's a nice contrast with the whites then grab right below that and then up and move it up and down to adjust accordingly. Usually you'll end up making it an S curve, which usually balances things nicely. And then move down to the bottom of the line. Sometimes this doesn't need to be adjusted, um, but it's always good to just check and, and see what looks the best to you. So you just kind of move this around. It actually looks pretty good about right there. So let's take a look at the before and after. Hit that button and look. So this is the original raw, and this is where we're at now. As you can see, we have a lot of details here in the rocks, good details up in the trees. The waterfall is perfectly exposed. We've got details in these rocks, and everything's just balanced nicely. And again, it's going to look sort of like an S-curve. You never want to publish an image without first going over your tone curves and making sure everything looks nice and it's all blended together well. Same with clarity. Sometimes you can get away with not adjusting your clarity, but most times you're going to either want to bring it in the negatives or positives a little bit. Other times it, it does look okay balanced at zero, but again, it's your editing style and the adjustment should be made according to what looks best to you. So thank you guys so much for watching. Remember to take breaks in your editing. If you guys have any questions or want to see particular editing videos in the future, be sure to let me know in the comments below. And I look forward to helping you guys out on the next video. Stay tuned.